the context is everything here. It's in regard to the one child being chosen and the other one not chosen at that time. But that's not to say that everybody doesn't get a chance at salvation. God wants everybody to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. That's quite clear. God wants everybody to be saved. He couldn't then have decided that Esau would not get saved and could not possibly get saved. That would be absolutely monstrous. We're talking about whose family was selected to have the Messiah. Esau didn't have a chance for that, but it's nothing whatsoever to do with Esau not having a chance of salvation, I would say. So the context in which Esau was excluded and the other person was included is in the context of God's plan for the Messiah to come. But that doesn't tell you that Esau couldn't ever repent and be saved. Otherwise, God doesn't want everybody to be saved, and that would be contradictory. Now, later on, when he sought repentance and didn't get it, that would sound like the unpardonable sin, that he went beyond the limit. There is such a thing as a sin that cannot be repented of. And Esau appears to have also come to that point. But that's not because do God doomed him before he was born. That would be a, a terrible blasphemy against the God of Israel, who wants all men to be saved, Esau made a false choice, ultimately didn't get it right, right to the point that God rejected him, though he wanted to be repentant. That's an awful thing, but that must be the case, I think, in, in this very extraordinary case, situation.